Hey guys, my name's Aaron from Geeky Lemon Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about how we can enable and disable objects within our applications. We first gonna learn about what objects can be enabled and disabled and we're gonna learn how we can trigger their values to enable or disable. We're then going to move on to detect if an object has been enabled or disabled and perform actions depending on the outcome. So let's jump straight into it. Okay then, so there's two parts to this tutorial. And in the first part, we're going to learn how we can enable and disable objects and learn about what types of objects can be, again, enabled or disabled. Before we then move on to the second part, where we learn how to detect if an object has been enabled again or disabled and then trigger actions upon the results. Now, already I have my project set up. It's a simple single view application for the iPhone and I've simply named it Swift Enabled for the purpose of this tutorial. Now the first thing I'm going to do is jump into the main Dutch storyboard. We've already set up our view here for the size of a simple iPhone screen as you can see there. So what we're going to do then is first add in a few objects into our interface here just to set it all up so we can begin. Now. Not every object can be enabled and disabled. Unlike one of our previous tutorials where we learned how to hide and reveal objects, we can only enable and disable certain objects. Now the objects that we can again enable and disable able are objects that our user can interact with. So any object that the user has to manually touch on the screen can be enabled and disabled. So we've got stuff like our simple buttons, which we're going to drag in and we're going to have two of these buttons because they're going to be what is going to enable and disable the objects in our view. So our first one, we call it enable. And I'm pasting a second one here. I simply call it disable. So these are going to be the two trigger buttons that will affect the objects. Now again, like I said, we can only enable and disable objects our user can interact with. So one of those objects is a button. So we've got two of those in, so we're going to use this button here to demonstrate the enable and disable. We can also do it with a segmented control because again, this is another object a user can interact with. A slider. Nice space that as well. So we're just going to place a few of these in just to demonstrate how uh, they look when their um, attributes change and a switch. So we'll demonstrate with these four objects. Again, these are all types of objects our user has to manually interact with their finger to trigger stuff within their applications. So all of these four objects here, they can be manually enabled or disabled within the attributes inspector here on the right hand side. As you can see by default, it's already set to enabled. Now if I toggle that off, all the objects are now slightly faded out, which is the disabled kind of state. Now we have the ability to select that within attributes inspector, which by default when the view loads up, depending on what you selected, will be how the object first gets presented to our user. But we want to talk about how we can manually trigger objects to be enabled or disabled at any given point within the application. So what I'm going to do then is create two actions for our enable and disable button and then four outlets for our four objects. So click the files owner and then jump into our assistant editor where I now space out our outlet section and again space out our action section. So let's start with our two buttons then. So I'll drag and drop in our first one, so there's an action and I'll call it enable button and then I simply connect that up. Same goes for our disable, disable button and make sure that is also an action and connect that up. And then we're going to create the four outlets. So our first one is our simple button, which I'll simply call it button outlet. Our segmented control, I'll simply call it our segment outlet. And our slider, again, simple slider outlet. Now the reason I'm calling them outlets on the end is because I know one of the objects, and I think it is the, the switch button here, if I named the switch outlet as simple switch, then there'll be a few problems because when it comes to coding, switch is an actual term. So switch, outlet, so just kind of keep it all in sequence here. We'll rename them all their name and then outlet. 
So once we've got those four outlets in there, we can then go on to our enable and disable button. So I'm going to space out our enable section here, and it's very simple to how we enable and disable objects. Now, when the application first loads up, all of our buttons by default are going to be enabled and our user can press them and do whatever they want with them. So the disable button is going to be the first button we use when we build and run. But we're first going to configure our enabled button. So we start with our first button outlet, so button outlet, and then we do dot, and then we need to select the attribute of the object we want to change. And in our case, is the enabled attribute. And we want that to equal a value of true. Now, by equaling the enabled value to true means when we press the button, our button outlet will be enabled. So our users can then press that button. So I'm going to repeat the process now, and I'll copy this, paste it in four times, because we've got four objects, and then simply change each of them. So we've got our segment outlet, we have our slider outlet, and then finally our switch outlet. So by pressing this button, it's going to trigger all four of these lines, which all of the objects are being selected, and equaling their enabled attribute to equal true. So we enabled all the objects at once. So if I copy that and paste it in for our disabled button, but this time we're going to make it equal false. Now false, again, is the opposite of true, which means all the objects or the selected object that we've chosen to equal false will mean that it will then become disabled. So then they'll have that faded out effect to which you've seen in the attributes um, inspector when we changed it in the interface builder. So we're going to go to build and run now and just see how our objects change when we enable and disable them before we move on to learning how we can then detect if an object again has been enabled or see but disabled. So we go to build and run now and we just wait for it to load up. So once it's loaded up, you can see we've got all our objects at the bottom here. We can press them. We can interact with them. They don't really do anything because we haven't set them to do anything, but you can see how we can simply use them. So then when we go to press our disable button, all of our four objects now have now faded out. So it hasn't removed it from the view. It's just created that fade out effect to show you that the objects are there, but you actually, you cannot click on them. As you can see now, I can't use any of them, which the fade out effect is a, a result of them being disabled. So our users can no longer use them, which is great because you can enable and disable content at any given point to the user, whether they need to use it or you want to stop them from using it or anything like that. You can even use this method to have stuff or content with application pre-disabled but then the user has to do any that purchase for this content to be enabled stuff like that so it's a great kind of feature to have in applications we then press our enabled button and it brings it all back to life and then we can then interact with them so that's simply how we can enable and disable objects within our applications so we're now going to move on to how we can detect if an object has been enabled or disabled. Now you may be thinking, why would I want to do that? What is the reason behind detecting if objects are enabled or disabled? Well, think of it this way. Let's say a great example is if you're playing a game and you go to select the level and it's got levels one to 10, but we can only play level one. Now to play level two, you need to complete level one to unlock level two. So you'll do simple things like, if level one has complete, then make the level two button enabled. Or if level one has not been completed yet, then make level two disabled. Stuff like that. That's how we can control the content within the application. So to demonstrate then by detecting if uh, an object has been able to disabled, we're going to place in a new button. So we're going to press this to kind of find out the state or the current state of one of our objects. Now I simply write is it enabled question mark and then we're going to trigger an action and all it's going to simply do is to simply display text within the label now the action that we're going to get to do to display the text and label that's not the important part the important part is how we detect if an, um, an object has been enabled or disabled to then trigger the action and just in my case the action is going to be displaying text within the label so we got those in now we need to add an action and an outlet for them so we start with our button, and I'll put is it enabled, and making sure that is an action, connect that up, and then place in a now new outlet for our label here, 
And I simply call it label, easy enough to understand. So we're going to close the assistant editor, go back to our standard editor. We're now going to jump into a view controller.swift just so we can see the code a little bit more. And I'll space it out here so you can clearly see it. And there we go. So how we detect it is with a simple if statement. And it means if the object's been enabled, do this, else if it's not, do this. That's simply all we're going to do. So if and we're going to use it off one object. Now, I'm not going to select all four objects or do all of them. We're going to like, you can basically make it specific to an actual object. So let's just go off our button outlet as the, um, the kind of trigger object for this if statement. So if our button outlet dot enabled to equal equal true. There we go. So if our button outlet dot enabled equal equal to true, which means is it equal to this value, then perform what we place in between these two curly brackets. So if the button outlet equals true, that means it's enabled. So we want our label dot text to simply equal objects are enabled. As simple as that. Now to detect if it's been disabled, we could simply do another if statement. If button outlet dot enabled equals equals to false, then do this. But we're not going to do that. That's not a kind of um, correct way to do it. Because there's only one alternative to this if statement. So if it equals um, true, then do this. And then the only other uh, um, option to the opposite, which is false, we just create an else statement on top of our if statement. So if it equals true, do this else now the only other outcome to true is false we'll just get our label dot text to equal objects are disabled that's only because there's only one other outcome that we can use that else statement else we would have just created another if statement so if we go to build and run now, we can now find out um, the current state of our objects. We can get actions to trigger upon the current state of our objects. And it kind of just shows you how you can control and progress within the content of the application. So by default, they're all enabled. So if I press, is it enabled? Objects are enabled. Now, if I disable the objects, again, this is working off our button outlet. So if I press it this time, because the button outlet is disabled, it says objects are disabled. And again, I can re-enable it. Buttons are enabled. Buttons are disabled. So the action it's performing, again, that's not the important part. The important part is how we can detect if content is enabled or disabled within an application. Once we got the answer, we can then perform the action, which in this case, the action is displaying text. So there we have it. We can now enable and disable objects and detect their current state to perform and trigger actions within our applications. So this is a great way to control the content being displayed to your users. So I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Hey guys, just before you go, I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial and if you did enjoy it, make sure you click that big like button down below. And if you'd like to further your knowledge and progress within iOS 9, Xcode 7 for Swift 2 and Objective-C, where you can learn how to create 20 real life applications, links for these will be below in the description of the video. And if you'd like to learn iOS development on the go, then make sure you check out one of our many iOS applications where you can learn how to create applications again within Objective-C and Swift. The links for these will also be in the description down below. And I'd just like to say one last time, if you did enjoy this video and it did help you out in any way, make sure you hit the big like button down below on the video and make sure you check out our website, geeklimmer.com, where you can find the full source code for this tutorial and all the others we offer. And make sure you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter so you can keep up to date with what's coming here at Geeklimmer. So once more, let's thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.